Welcome to Perspectives, a podcast where the clergy women of the First United Methodist Church of San Diego share their musings on scripture, theology, and what it has to do with us. Welcome to Perspectives, a podcast where we have deep conversations about scripture, hopefully bringing some relevance to your life. We're glad you are here listening. I'm Reverend Trudy Robinson. I'm here with Reverend Brittany Hanlon, and we are starting a new um, series today, a series we've entitled Everyday Saints. We're looking at what the people the early church deemed, and even the current church deemed, to be exceptional in their faith. And today we're starting at the very beginning, a renowned saint, the Apostle Paul. Mm. And yeah, we're going to get to that, <laughs> the Apostle Paul. And through this series, we're going to be looking at some of his writings because um, he was trying to shape people into being good, faithful people, uh, people of God, people following the Christ. And so uh, what else do you need in order to be a saint except for perhaps the advice of Paul, or at least that's a good place to start. So we are starting today as we look at the Apostle Paul with uh, his writing, his first letter to the church in Corinth. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 10, and this is what it says. Brothers and sisters, I want to call your attention to the good news that I preached to you, which you also received and in which you stand. You are being saved through it if you hold on to the message I preached to you, unless somehow you believed it for nothing. I passed on to you as most important what I also received. Christ died for our sins in line with the scriptures. He was buried and he rose on the third day in line with the scriptures. He appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at once. Most of them are still alive to this day, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and least of all, and last of all, he appeared to me, as if I were born at the wrong time. I'm the least important of the apostles. I don't deserve to be called an apostle because I harassed God's church. I am what I am by God's grace, and God's grace has been, hasn't been nothing, sorry, I am what I am by God's grace, and God's grace hasn't been for nothing. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have worked harder than all the others. That is, it wasn't me, but the grace of God that is with me. Mm. Paul's writing. Okay, you've already shown a little bit of your cards already, Brittany. We know if you're a regular listener to the podcast, Brittany has said it before. She does not like the Apostle Paul. She does not like St. Paul. She doesn't like Paul, however you want to call it. I want to know, what is it about Paul? Why don't you like him? Okay, okay. so it's not that I don't necessarily like Paul, but he irritates me. And maybe it's how other people, how the church treat Paul. In my opinion, right, Paul wasn't even the one who received the message directly. Like, he wasn't there to hear Jesus' teachings of the parables. Mm -hmm. He wasn't around the community during that time, right? And he speaks with such an authority that really just aggravates my spirit because, like, yes, I hear you had an encounter with the risen Christ, and I love that for you, but, like, what about the teachings of Christ? And, like, mm -hmm. why do you have more authority in the church than anybody else, right? Why is most of the New Testament comprised of Paul's writings, right? So to me, he just irritates me. He's just this, and maybe, again, maybe it's not Paul in and of himself. Maybe it's just the way that I find the church to have given him such this grandiose stance as though, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. he's just so wonderful and I just don't think he's that great. I also struggle because some of Paul's, again, this isn't Paul, right? It's not his fault, but his language has been taken out of context and used to justify some pretty horrible things like women not being in ministry, right? That's that folks love to quote Paul on that. Um, love and women's roles, what women are supposed to do and how they're supposed to be. They love to do that. Um, Howard Thurman, the theologian of my heart, his grandmother, Nancy Ambrose, would have him read, right, the the 
gospel, have him read the Bible. And when he got up to the epistle, she would tell him to stop, don't read her any Paul, because that was Paul's words were used to justify the subjugation of black people when he uses the word slave and there is, we're neither slaves nor free and all of that kind of stuff used as justification for the enslavement and the subjugation and marginalization of people. So I don't think it's necessarily Paul, right? I can't, mm -hmm. he irritates mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. but he does have some redeeming qualities that I'll come back to later. Mm -hmm. But I do think that the church has elevated his voice mm -hmm. like the church often does with men <clears throat> in a way <laughs> that I just don't find anything that he said to be so spectacular mm -hmm. that his authority overshines that of Jesus. Does that make sense? I think I think you laid it all out there. I think that's two or three different podcast episodes we can always come back to. <laughs> don't ask if you don't want to know, you Reverend. Go. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, um, the Apostle Paul, it really is an interesting uh, connection. His, his witness mm -hmm. and the way the church formed, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're right. Uh, he doesn't say anything about uh, the life of Jesus. He doesn't say anything, no stories about his healing, no stories or teachings, no parables, no miracles. Uh, Paul focuses completely on his dying for our sins, being buried, being risen, and appearing to others. That's where he comes in, right? right. But his is the very first witness mm -hmm. in print chronologically right. that we have, mm -hmm. right? His letters come well before the Gospels. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess I would, I would grant him that, that, <laughs> that, that his work in the community, the nascent community that was growing up around following Jesus, his work was uh, what bound, bound people together what uh, helped them understand what was the most important thing. And I think that's probably why he is given such, such a stance. Um, it, it was his witness to begin with. That, yeah. be, that was written down. Now, you know, I mean, I can take Paul and I can leave Paul. There, you know, you're, there's, there's part of it. And even this scripture passage that we read, mm -hmm. um, I, I have to struggle with a little bit, if I'm mm -hmm. honest. Um, because, he, in a sense, he has boiled down all that could be said about Jesus mm -hmm. into the simple fact that he died for the forgiveness of sins, he was buried, he was resurrected on the third day, mm -hmm. and appeared to others. Mm -hmm. And I struggle with making all of that feel relevant for us today. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if I have a good sense of how to make that relative, um, you know, in 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 kind of a, a more scientifically oriented worldview, mm -hmm. um, with a little bit of allowance for mysticism and a spiritual side of mm -hmm. us, I I think I understand that that core of that message to be that um, we all die. We all also do things within our lifetime that cause little deaths mm -hmm. within us and around us. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that which we do that causes that death is sin, mm -hmm. is sinful. Um, and I also do really believe in, in that power of the forgiveness of that, right? I really do believe it. There's, there, she's giving me a look for those of you who are listening. She's giving me a look. We're going to get to the redemption that she's, uh, she's got issues with at some point. But, but I do believe in the power of forgiveness of sins mm -hmm. um, that, that allows us to be able to recognize the harm we have done that caused all that little death mm -hmm. to try again and to be different. Right. Um, to, to, and, and that difference is, I, I believe it can be, so striking mm -hmm. that it can look like a new person. Mm -hmm. It can look like a new birth, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Paul has that experience, right? He, he does. He, yeah, his, his uh, persecution of the church found Jesus and completely flipped the script, mm -hmm. right? So um, 
my problem with that whole scenario, I mean, that's a real humanized kind of version of it. Uh, but I, I think I think there's some power to it, mm -hmm. especially if you really do lean into what it means to be forgiven of those sins. Mm -hmm. Um, I think part of our problem, we like to say we don't believe in the resurrection or how can that happen in, in our modern scientific worldview. Um, but I, I think the real issue that we have is that we really have a hard time believing in the forgiveness of sins for ourselves or for anybody else. Because, you know, if we really believed, I think we could really do something different. Mm -hmm. Right? I I'm with you. I'm you, standing with you. I'm with okay, you. However, okay. however, mm -hmm. I believe in the forgiveness of sin, right? I do. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I do. However, yeah. I don't believe that you can be redeemed if you have not first repented. And this mm -hmm. is where Paul comes in for me, mm -hmm. right? That's okay. a little different. Now, I got I to gotta stand with my man on this, uh, right? Okay. Now, Paul... I give him a hard time. But the thing that I do appreciate about Paul mm -hmm. is that he was a person who persecuted the Christians, the Jewish Christians, right? He was standing against the church. Mm -hmm. Once he had this reckoning, once he found, once Jesus found him, right? Mm -hmm. And he's on this road to Damascus, Paul is totally different. He is totally mm -hmm. changed, right? Yeah. And in this particular text, he says, I harass the church. I don't even deserve to be called an apostle right, for right. the things that I've done, yeah, right? Yeah. And I really respect and appreciate the fact that he yeah. can stand in the truth of knowing that yeah. he made horrible mis uh, mistakes. He made horrible decisions at one time in his life. Mm -hmm. And now he has turned himself from that, right? Repentance is to turn away and move mm -hmm. away from and mm -hmm. to move towards something different. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Paul is an example of, okay, he made mistakes. He wasn't yeah. perfect. He didn't live a perfect life as Saul, right? Mm -hmm. And even as Paul, he made mistakes. Mm -hmm. no, no one's perfect. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate the fact that he was able to acknowledge the, the harm that he caused, the communities that he destroyed, the ways in which he was seeking to kill and destroy, right? Mm -hmm. And now how he says, I found... I found Christ and I'm a different version of myself and I know that I need to be different and I need, need to move away from. Mm -hmm. So when I think about forgiveness, I think people have a hard time with forgiveness because mm -hmm. people often don't change, yeah. right? Yeah. And so it, and even for ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. We, mm -hmm. you know, I can tell myself all day long, I'm not going to eat bread tomorrow <laughs> and tomorrow comes <laughs> And I'm eating right. something oh my with a little carbon. In it. Oh, now you're preaching. Girl. I'm just Stop saying, it. right? I'm just being honest. <laughs> but we can say these things. Oh, we're going to move away from. We're n but in reality, we often find ourselves doing the same thing over and over again because we've con been conditioned or it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. But when I see Paul saying, like, "No, I'm I'm different than who I was. I'm yeah. I am remade. I am mm -hmm. no longer Saul. I am mm -hmm. Paul." I can respect that because he's not just saying, "I saw the light mm -hmm. and now I'm different." Right. He's also saying, "I did some horrible things, That's right?" right? That's and in right. acknowledging how different he is, he can acknowledge the ways in which he caused harm. And and he'll know how to be different. And he'll know how to that's be right. different. That's right. right. And and you're absolutely right. I think that's part of the stuff we just don't want to face. Exactly. We just want people to forget about it. Cheap grace. On. Cheap grace. Cheap grace. That's right. right? That's and right. I love John Wesley, that's but right. he sometimes made it a little cheap for us. So one of the... Th <laughs> but I'm, we on another subject. Keep it moving, Reverend. Go. So um, I find it interesting, though, that that Paul, in in the acceptance of forgiveness mm -hmm. and and the rebirth of a new kind of life, mm -hmm. um, Paul still kind of struggles with that new identity. Mm -hmm. um, and even in in the scripture here, um, you know, he talks about I'm unworthy of being called an apostle, mm -hmm. um, and I'm the least. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the, uh, but. He's also kind of cocky in his writings mm -hmm. too. He's got that authoritative voice, you know. Exactly. But uh, but I worked really hard, and so I re I'm, I'm really okay to be called a, an apostle. I've toiled, toiled more than any other, right? Um, I preached, and you believed, right? And 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 truthfully, he is the most effective, most important agent of the gospel of Christ. Um, he does offer it to God and God's grace, the credit, right? But as I as I thought about that um, that tension he has between saying, you know, I I'm a nobody when he looks back, and mm -hmm. and yet I'm 
you know, and yet he does all this other stuff. I, I find that same tension within me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there there are some days when you know I I know I'm hot stuff. I know I'm doing a good job. I I got this. Don't don't worry about me, right? I know. And then there are other days I think, oh my gosh, what the heck am I doing? Yeah. I mean, and I swing back and forth and back and forth, and. Um, I, I think the longer I, I am in the faith, the longer I strive for understanding the faith, I think that that swing mm-hmm. slows and it balances out. And, and I think with, with that time and the balancing out of the swings of feeling worthy or, or feeling confident or un, uh, unworthy, mm-hmm. I, I think comes with a, a, a humility, yeah, right? Um, I, I think maybe it's the difference between, you know, um, those days when you're having bad days, you're, you're looking for someone else to validate you. Mm-hmm. It's, it's almost like Paul in this passage saying, well, everybody else saw him. Why can't I see him, mm-hmm. him too as mm-hmm. a risen Christ, right? So he's, he's looking for other people to say, oh, yeah, 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 you're good. You're good. You're one of us. We get it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I think I do that too, or I have done that, yeah. looking for that validation. Mm-hmm. Um, but the more you do it, the deeper your faith grows, the longer you're on this spiritual journey, you get to a place where you do realize it is the grace of God that has brought me here. Mm -hmm. And I didn't need anybody to be telling me differently. I needed to be sitting in the presence of God. I needed Mm -hmm. to be learning more about God and God's ways. Mm -hmm. I needed to be watching for that in my own life. Mm -hmm. And with that comes that confidence that is more more around the depth of faith I have Mm -hmm. rather than anybody else saying, yeah, you're, you're okay. Yeah. I, I totally understand that. And I think that that's a part that I think that keeps me humble. Right. Mm -hmm. And to know that like, I can't do any of this. Like if someone says, Oh, Reverend Brittany, that was such a great sermon. Well, you better thank the Holy spirit. Cause it, I don't believe that that was my own doing. Right. Right. I mean, I don't think that I act on my own in that regard. So I definitely, definitely understand that. And I would have a prayer. I remember when I was in New York and I was just feeling like so overwhelmed, like, what am I doing here in this church? What, why am I in the church in general? And my prayer was God, when I don't have the confidence in myself, can I have confidence in you who've called me? That's a beautiful prayer. And that's kind of what kind of anchored me for Mm -hmm. a while Mm -hmm. when I thought about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I'm with you. I, I hate it when people will say, oh, you're so good. I love it when you do this, when you preach or when your sermon, you know, whatever. Um, and, and I know it's not me. I know because I will preach a sermon, and some people come back and say, "I love it when you said," and I'm like, oh, "I don't say I that." Know. When I say that, <laughs> right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so there, yeah, people for good and for ill will hear mm-hmm. um, something that they're looking for, mm-hmm. and and I think you know, there's there's one theologian that will describe God as the energy that happens between, between people, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And so I I think that's that's. There's something happening mm-hmm. there that is God's doing right. whenever we try and do something of faith. Yeah. And it, and it affects both of us. Mm-hmm. And just like you were saying with Paul and, and, and us, as we continue to grow and deepen in our faith, right, we become more confident in who God is and who God called us to be. Mm-hmm. And as I think about that, I think about the fact that in our faith, right, just like Paul there are things that we know, there are things that we do, right? Mm-hmm. But the, when we deepen our faith, some of those things no longer serve us, right? Mm-hmm. And Paul knew certain things, right? Mm-hmm. Both, I mean, he was, he was a Jewish man, so he knew the Jewish teachings and he knew all of those things, right? Mm-hmm. But he wasn't really living into them in mm-hmm. the same way, right? Yeah. The, the Ten Commandments is very clear, thou shalt not kill, and he was out here persecuting, right? right. right. So, but, the, but as he found Jesus, as Jesus found him, as he found and deepened his faith, he turned away from those things. And I think that that's a part of our faith journey, that there are things that we've taken on throughout our lives that serve us in some ways, but there comes a time when we have to interrogate it, where we have to examine it, where we have to explore beyond it, where we have to think beyond it so that we might be able to move in the new direction that God is calling yeah, us to. Yeah. 
my faith has certainly gone from being kind of in a box mm -hmm. to being much more expansive. Yeah. Um, and it really does come from understanding God mm -hmm. in a deeper way. In the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So we've looked at Paul um, as, a, as a saint mm -hmm. uh, and a sinner. Mm -hmm. And that's all of us. Hello. Right? But a saint is just a sinner, in the words of Donnie McClurkin, that fell down and got up. There you go. Hello. That's right. Mm -hmm. I hope the rest of these uh, conversations will kind of bring us more insight as to how the saints really are a lot like us, uh, hopefully to inspire us yeah. to continue with the faith journey and to, and to do the things that uh, won't make us a saint for saint's sake, but will bring us to new life. Yeah. in a way that brings more life than death. And it'll definitely deepen our faith mm -hmm. and deepen and strengthen the faith of the church, I believe. I believe it too. So we have a couple of questions for you all. What do you think about Paul? You know what I think. <laughs> it's deep as long as wide. You know what I think, but what do you think about Paul? And what makes someone a saint to you in your eyes? Mm -hmm. And lastly, what do you do that puts you close to sainthood? We hope that you will examine these questions and dive in deep. There are plenty of opportunities for you to join us in worship at 9 o'clock. We have an 11 o'clock service where we get to think about this. And we also have our meeting convergence that meets this yeah. Tuesday online. and online mm -hmm. and this Sunday. So we hope that you'll join us. See you soon. Bye. This is a production of First United Methodist Church of San Diego. To learn more about our events and ministries and to access additional learning resources, visit fumcsd.org.